That's one small step for man. When I was three years old, I was watching uh, people walk on the moon. One giant leap for mankind. My parents woke me up uh, for Apollo 11, but I knew since I was that old that I wanted to go fly in space. When I had broke the code that all those early astronauts were actually military aviators, I said, that's what I want to do, and just followed it all the way through. But I never thought uh, my mom would ever let me become an astronaut. All the astronauts were test pilots, and my mom was scared of flying. The interesting thing that happened in 1978 was that was the year they took the first group of women astronauts. And I thought, wow, there's a path for me. I never made the best grades in school. Um, I struggled. I struggled with math. I struggled with science. It's about perseverance. And it took um, almost a decade before I finally was accepted in NASA's uh, astronaut program. So I started applying in 1984 and was finally accepted in 1990. Didn't get selected that first time, but I was encouraged because they actually didn't throw my application back at me and laugh at me. The key to the astronaut office and the success of the missions that we have carried out is the diversity in our skill set. Um, so I'm a mechanic. So my background is as a military test pilot. I uh, studied multi-phase fluid mechanics, so that's a fancy way of saying bubbles. I was able to become a naval flight officer and fly with the Navy. And ultimately that, that love of mechanical engineering and material science is what got me doing the kind of engineering that I uh, even do today. And I've always been a curious person trying to figure out why the world works the way it does. There were things that I did during training that I never imagined that I would be doing. It was like being on a Disney ride my whole career. And then they took us parasailing behind a pickup truck. And as a pilot and a commander, we had to fly a thousand approaches in that aircraft before we were considered qualified to land the real thing. The training for spacewalks, when we go in a, in a pool, basically put on a, a spacesuit, they add weights to you so that you don't pop up like a cork out of the water. You know, we were prepared extremely well. The, the training that we got was, boy, there was like nothing left, uh, very little left to the imagination. The one thing that they can never really prepare you for is the visual impact of actually looking out and seeing the Earth. And there's really no way to prepare for that.